Hi, in this video, I'm going to explain uh, the concept of how the vector table plays a part in exception handling. Okay, so I, I wanted to make this video because yesterday I received quite a handful of questions uh, regarding this slide in the lecture notes. Okay, so I want to create this video just to uh, make sure that you guys get the concept clear. Okay, uh, on the left here, what we see here is the vector table. Okay, this vector table, uh, every microcontroller or every microprocessor has its own vector table. Okay, and uh, what a vector table does is, what a vector table is, is, is basically a list, uh, a table, okay, uh, where each entry in the table is actually a address, okay, that points to where the actual code is, okay. If you look at uh, the address 4, for example, it is our reset vector. Okay, so this reset vector basically means the starting point uh, or the first line of code that you begin to execute the moment you uh, boot up this controller. Okay, so let's look at on the right hand side, we have a memory map of the uh, uh, microcontroller that we are using for our freedom board. Okay, so let's uh, assume okay so as we can see that the code is actually located from address 0 okay and let's assume that the first line of code okay that we are going to execute uh, is in address location 0x 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 uh, uh, maybe 1000 0, 0, 0. okay so I'm just giving you a random address so assuming that this is the first line uh, the address of the first line of code that we are going to execute uh, the moment we come out of reset, uh, that means when we boot up the system. So when we compile the code, okay, what will happen is this address, okay, this address uh, would be stored in this address location 0x04. Okay, so if I look into this address location 0x04, I will see this address. Okay, I'll see this data. Sorry, 0x0000 1000. Okay, in this address location, uh, address 4. Okay, so what would happen is upon boot up, okay, this uh, the microcontroller will come to this address, address 04. Okay, it will take the data in address 04, which is this, and put it into the program counter. Okay, put it into the program counter. And what is the program counter? The program counter is basically a register that holds the address of the next instruction to execute. Yes. So when I put this data okay, into the program counter 0x 0000 1000, it will point to this location here, okay, where it will be starting the execution of the code. Okay, so that is the whole idea of the uh, vector table and how it actually uh, boots up the system, okay, using the reset vector. Okay, now how about the concept of interrupts okay as I mentioned okay when we write a IRQ handler we have to use the appropriate name okay and why we have to use the appropriate name is because there is uh, in our header files each uh, peripheral device that supports interrupts has already been mapped to a particular entry inside this table okay inside this uh, table over here okay and so what we need to do is we need to make sure that Okay, uh, we use the correct name. So when we compile the code, okay, this code would be placed somewhere in memory. Okay, so this is the whole region uh, that we have for the code. Okay, and uh, this body uh, will be compiled, and during compile time, it can be placed anywhere in memory. Okay, so I can just give it some uh, random address now. So let's assume that the address of this IRQ handler means the start of this IRQ handler is stored in address location 0x. Uh, 0, 0, uh, a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so you can notice that I always write it as a 32-bit address, okay, because this is a 32-bit system. Okay, we have a 32-bit address bus, so every address is 32 bits. Okay, and right now, uh, when I compile the code, uh, this port DRQ handler, that means this uh, interrupt service routine that I've written, would be compile to start at a particular address okay this address okay can change anytime i can change anytime because as your code becomes bigger or smaller 
uh, the actual code gets shifted up and down in actual memory but that does not matter because as long as we are using the preset name which is port the IQ handler that is the most important thing okay and why is that important because when I compile what the compiler will do is it will look for this name port the IQ handler and it will take the address of where this code is starting from okay and place it in the appropriate vector table entry okay so if you recall from uh, yes, uh, this week's slides the port D IRQ handler is actually the last entry in the table okay so um, in the last entry in the table so let's say this is the port D IRQ okay port D IRQ then what I will do is in this address location I will put this ad, uh, in this address location I will put this information which is 0x00 a0 0000 okay so what happens is when the microcontroller detects uh, through the NVIC uh, through, through the NVIC it detects that uh, there is a port D interrupt okay in the system okay uh, of course the first few steps we already have seen it will uh, complete the current instruction it will go and save the context onto the stack okay and after that what it will do is it needs to jump to this IRQ handler okay so I need to jump to this IRQ handler and start executing it but how do I know where this IRQ handler is located okay so that is where the vector table comes in so what uh, the controller will do is it will come to this entry okay in the vector table take this information and put it into the program counter okay so the program counter now has this information 0x00 a0 0000 and what does the program counter do it points to the address of the next instruction to be executed so at the next clock cycle I will come to this address and start executing my handler okay so that is basically how the uh, vector table plays a very important part in ensuring that the correct handler is executed for the different type of interrupts that are supported by the system okay so in order to make sure that the address is loaded into the vector table that is why we need to use the correct name okay for the handlers okay because all these are already defined in the header files of the system okay so i hope uh, this explanation clears uh, any doubts that you may have on how the exception uh, handling is done with the vector table okay uh, so if you still have any doubts about this uh, please feel free to whatsapp me or email me okay and i will explain uh, anything that you are still unclear about okay uh, that's about it. Thank you.